What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video, another tip video. More importantly, you guys tear those up. You guys love them. One question I would like to ask is what tip videos would you like to see next? But today what we're gonna be doing is I'm going down to a small pond and I'm pretty much gonna show you guys how I break down an area, whether it's a new area or it's an area I've been to, pretty much how to break down small ponds and how to fish small ponds and how I go about it. So let's go ahead and go down to the pond, baby. Just got down to this pond right here, and as you can tell, it's just a small little area. Most of you guys are probably gonna be fishing some smaller ponds. This pond right here is very, very small. But when I come to a new location or when I come down to a pond, there's a few things I really look at, even before I make a cast. Obviously, when I'm looking at the pond right here, just a smaller area, very isolated place. There's not really much going on, and as you guys can tell, you know, I see a few things that really catch my eye. One, I see a tree over there in the water. As you guys can tell over there, that's, a, that's one of the main focuses, I see a tree. Another thing is I see these trees that are hanging over the water back in that corner. So that's gonna tell me one thing. On a sunny day, those trees are gonna cast a shadow out in that water and it's gonna be an area where the sun's not beaming down. So there's gonna be a lot of shade over there in that corner. Then you got, uh, you got a big old tree laying down in the water that those bass are gonna suck up against. I don't care if it's cloudy, sunny on a sunny day more more importantly they're going to tuck up under that tree um, but most of the time especially largemouth bass they love trees they love wood as i look around the pond i really don't see much you know i don't see much more as i start to cast i'll realize that oh there's some grass right here oh there might be some like rocks under underneath the surface but there is one thing i see right here as you guys can tell there's two little stumps or two little pieces of wood that are sticking out of the water and they're just kind of out there by themselves. They're very isolated and bass love that stuff. If you guys ever see anything isolated in the middle, whether it's like a little twig sticking up out of the water, maybe there's like a tree stump or a, a tree that's sticking out of the water, you need to throw at that. Like that right there, you know, that's just a little, little piece of wood. I'm gonna be starting off with a spinner bait. What I tend to do when I go to these little areas is I start off with a moving bait first and see how active those fish are. If the fish aren't like wanting to really cooperate with me, they're not really trying to bite it. You know, I might switch over to, you know, a slow working bait. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch over to, you know, my soft plastics, my crawls, my worms, that whole deal. And that's what I'm gonna do. But when I first go to a location, I usually start off with a moving bait first to see if I can catch those active fish. And then throughout the day, I'll slow down and throw me a worm. And it all depends on the conditions. Like if it was bluebird skies out here, super, super, super hot, I wouldn't even start off with this. I'd probably just go ahead and move over to my crawl or my worm. If you guys want to check out my other tip video where I talked about my crawl, where you can pretty much work it all different ways, that's another good option, especially um, if it's super sunny outside, but you want something to throw around moving anyways. But as you guys can tell, that isolated cover right there, I got this old spinner bait, some Colorado blades, and then I actually painted some of the blades red. This is the Fish Head Spinner Baits Primal Series with a little trailer hook on it. You got this very dirty water. You got a little bit of cloud cover in the sky, not too much sun, no wind at all, but I'm gonna slow roll this. Through. Let's make a cast right out there. I promise you guys, like 90% of the time, there's gonna be a fish on structure like this, or um, these, little, these little trees. There's gonna be a, you know, a fish on that stuff. Maybe he's not wanting something moving today, because I promise you, especially in a small pond like this, there's not going to be too much. You know, maybe maybe some ponds that people go to, there's going to be a lot of laydowns in the water. Maybe there's a lot of rock. You know, who knows, whatever it is. But especially on a place like this where there's really not much, like I said, there's a tree over there. And then there's like these little trees that are hanging over, and I know there's going to be a little, little bit of shade back in this corner. But, you know, the one thing is there's not too much stuff for these fish to hide on. There's not... There's not many rocks. I haven't seen any rocks at all. You know, there's not too many trees. So when I see something like that, I'm 100% casting at it. But I'm just gonna start going down this bank right here, fan cast, and see if they're gonna try to eat this moving bait. So I really didn't, I've been throwing this around for quite a second. I didn't have any bites on it. I'd really like there to be some wind out here, especially when throwing a spinner bait. It's just something I had on my rod and I was like, I'm gonna take it down here and throw this as my, you know, moving bait and see if I can catch any active ones. But I'm actually gonna cut this off, tie on a Texas rig, put a regular zoom speed crawl in there. And we're gonna go around and catch some fish. We're gonna work it on the top, we're gonna walk it on the middle and on the bottom and see if we can catch some of these fish out here. Instead of a zoom speed crawl, I actually got a little rage crawl on. Got a little lead bullet weight, little EWG. Three out hook. I'm gonna go down this bank, cover some water with this thing. I'm actually gonna reel it at the top of the water to start off with, especially in this little. Whoop. Actually, I had something hit it right there. Right away, right off the bat. It's gonna cover a lot of water. 
don't know if you guys watch some of my videos i'm a big fan of throwing a rage crawl on top of the water and right below the surface and actually reeling it rather than just using it as a little flipping bait i'm a big fan of using it as a you know moving bait and a slow moving bait at the same time oh yeah oh my gosh it's a huge one i saw him come right off him right up on the bank there we go baby <laughs> he ain't a monster monster but he's a good quality fish oh man what a beautiful one right there let me show let me tell you guys something right now look at that that's a beautiful fish he's about let's say two and a quarter maybe pushing two about two and a half really thick he's a he's a thick fish he's not that is a beautiful fish right there guys let's get a quick release on him and i'll show you guys how i caught that there we go guys beautiful little bass right here solid thick and healthy one let's get him back in the water There he goes. So everyone, at the beginning of the episode, I threw my spinnerbait past that little isolated cover and how I was talking about that when pretty much you see, you know, any sticks or anything literally sticking up by itself out there in the middle or whatever it is. A majority, on the majority of the time, you're gonna catch, you know, a big fish on that stuff. So what I did is I casted this crawl past that really at the top of the water a couple of times. He didn't even, you know, it didn't even phase him. Then when I cast it right next to that left-hand side of it, landed right next to that little stump, I pretty much saw a wake in the water to the left of my bait. And from there, I was about to say, you know, he's about to eat it. I felt him tick it one time and he had it. That just shows, you know, when you when you pinpoint that type of stuff when you're coming to these ponds, it's pretty much like a given. Like, you know where the fish is going to be, especially when you throw the right bait in there. But let's continue to work down this side, back in this corner, and uh, back to where this tree is at. I cannot believe that. Guys, I cannot believe that. I just, that's unbelievable. I have no idea. I skipped up under that tree back there and he ticked it right away and it just snapped right off and I tried to hook set him. All right, I'm about to get my revenge on this fish right here. That was the awkwardest hook set. I've done it in a minute. I'm like under some trees. It's really hard to hook set back here. But wow, second fish of the day. Exactly where I called him out. I said there was gonna be one on that tree right when I got out here. Just like I did on that little isolated uh, stump over there. In both the locations, there was some fish on. Again, as you guys can tell, a little pretty dark bass right there. Right off that tree. But I promise you, he's not the only one. So when you're fishing places like this, don't be afraid to go throw multiple casts. Cause that, like a big tree like that, especially in a small pond, a small location like this isn't just going to have one fish on it. it's going to have multiple i i guarantee you that 100 whether you can get them to bite or not but after you catch one i would continue to cast there and see if you can pick another one off because that took me about seven more casts after i broke off to even get another bite off that tree but then i did right when i threw in there that's how i caught that bad boy Two casts right after that one in the same exact spot. Caught another fish. Uh, shows you right there. I'm just proving everything that I'm saying back and forth. Is there's gonna be more fish on that tree? That was two casts, literally in the same spot, and I caught another little beautiful bass right there. Nothing super big, but super. These fish are heavy. It's really weird out here. These fish got a lot of weight behind them, but in the same spot, threw it in there. He just ticked it. Beautiful little bass. So there's actually another reason why there's a lot of fish stacked right here rather than me just saying you know this tree is the reason why but there's actually some water flowing in in the pond right back here in this corner and that's where the water's coming in at fish love that little current you know that little water pushing through they're just going to stack up all around that especially where the mouth is here and i'm only fishing in about six inches of water with large mouth you're not really going to have to worry about that much you know these large mouth they get up in the nastiest nastiest stuff and you guys would be surprised where i've caught some large mouth it just blows my mind every time i catch a large mouth in some crazy areas but i mean that's just it's their natural it's their natural thing i mean they they're everywhere they hang out in all this nasty dirty stuff where you really don't think a fish would be really pay attention
attention to these corners in these ponds. Like right here it has just a little bit of rock out here in this corner. And then it's got a little tree that sunk in right out here. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I watched him eat it right there. I'm just at a weird angle under this tree. Right in the corner where I said he was going to be. He's a little baby guy. I can tell you that. I could tell how he was hitting it. Never got the bait all the way. Let's throw it back in there. When you get a bite, make sure you throw it back in there. That was actually a different one. I was just swimming that curl that time instead of working on the bottom. I just swam that thing right by. This fish just came out of nowhere and just annihilated that thing. Pretty little fat guy. I can tell you that. Nothing big, but look at that little belly on that thing. <laughs> Let's start back in that corner and see if we can catch another. Another thing is you guys see that tree right there, how it kind of hangs over. And with the sun glaring down this water, you can tell that he's leaving a little shade right under that tree. Sorry about the quality guys. My camera actually died and I'm having to switch over to an iPhone now. But uh, as I was saying, there's that tree that hangs over a little bit of shade underneath the tree. There should be a fish under there. Not always, but there, there should be a fish. That's, that's one of those things that you need to cast at. Now this is the perfect corner. This is actually where that tree is, the same tree. A lot of shade right here. Then you got that water flowing to the left-hand side where that water's coming in. Oh my. That was insane. These fish were, these little baby guys were schooling out there in the middle. It's another way to catch them, man. <laughs> I saw some fish popping up in the middle of the water out there and I threw that thing in there before I could even... Just like that. And I skipped this thing up all the way in between that tree to where it came on to the other side um, because I was fishing on all this edge and I just drug him out from the other side to come onto this tree and just eat my bait right there. A little thick, pretty guy right there. 